How Crypto Market Chaos Affected US Bank Stocks, an article written by Caspiancy. The current market chaos in US banking, tech, and cryptocurrency is hard to summarize without using the common moniker FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, in a very literal sense. After the pandemic, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates in an attempt to bring down inflation and unemployment numbers in the US. Regardless, inflation went up, interest rates continued to rise. This flew in the face of years of enjoying low to no interest rates, first introduced with the goal of ensuring a stable economy. For what it's worth, no banks failed from October 2020 until this year. However, cryptocurrency markets tumbled when FTX was identified as a fraudulent actor in November. Its main banking partner, Silvergate, served most prominent crypto firms, but when it began to experience a credit and liquidity crunch, depositors exited en masse and loan markets dried up. The Federal Home Loan Bank of San Francisco recalled its advances to the bank and short sellers piled into the stock. Its main business, the Silvergate Exchange Network, was shuttered. The crypto-friendly bank moved to voluntary liquidate on March 9th. Crypto market chaos as Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation takes over Silicon Valley Bank and Signature. Silicon Valley Bank became the first bank failure in the past two and a half years on March 10th. To put it simply, the bank had a mismatched bond portfolio due to rising interest rates and an extremely specific risk management structure due to its venture capitalist clientele. On Thursday, with the stock of Silicon Valley Bank collapsing, its chief executive pleaded with depositors to stem the tide of withdrawals, stating, quote, If everybody is telling each other that Silicon Valley Bank is in trouble, then that will be a challenge, end quote. A bank run basically began the very next second. The stock was scheduled to open at $37 on Friday, but trading was halted and the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation took over the bank. By the end of the day, Silicon Valley Bank no longer existed. Its name was changed by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation to the Deposit Insurance National Bank of Santa Clara. In what could be described as half-concerned trolling and half-manic meltdowns, public-facing venture capitalists spent the weekend making dire predictions of the collapse of Western civilization. They demanded that the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which traditionally only promises to insure deposits of up to $250,000, insure every deposit at Silicon Valley Bank. With rich capitalists threatening widespread regional bank runs, a very real systemic risk began to develop. The second bank collapse occurred on March 12th, Signature Bank in New York. Just like Silvergate, Signature was a large provider of banking for cryptocurrency companies. Instead of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation moving in to take over the bank, a statement was issued jointly with the Fed and Treasury, ensuring all deposits at Silicon Valley Bank and at Signature Bank would be covered. Seemingly, a widespread regional bank run had been avoided. Now what? Several other banks appeared to be suffering from degrees of pressure. From local Californian banks catering to clients like those at Silicon Valley Bank, to dozens centred on cryptocurrency clients. The odds aren't exactly small that we'll avoid more bank failures or liquidations. But the Federal Reserve is having a closed-door meeting today, and in the meantime, all depositors' cash at banks in crisis are insured. Will the contagion spread? Will crypto-friendly banks be shuttered or allowed to continue? How many banks will fail in 2023? And will the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation insurance be changed forever? We should know many answers by the end of the week. For more informed news, follow us on Twitter and Google News, or subscribe to our YouTube channel.